Mr. President. Mr. Carolina. I'd like to thank Senator McCain and Senator Levin for, for really organizing this debate on this amendment in a way that maybe we can get closure tonight. Uh, both our, our ranking member and chairman have been very helpful of pushing an amendment forward where we have 71 co-sponsors. To Senator Lay, it's been a real privilege and a joy working with you on this. We had 71 members of the Senate sign on to the, to the legislation, and it's simple. It says the Chief of the National Guard Bureau will now be a member of the Joint Chiefs. What does that mean in the real world? It means that the citizen soldier's voice will be heard at the highest levels of our government. After 1947, we re reorganized the Defense Department. It became the modern Defense Department with the Joint Chiefs, where we have representatives from the Marine Corps, the Air Force, the Army, the Navy, and now the citizen soldier. Why is that important? After 9-11, the Guard's role in defending this nation has changed substantially. The Guard and Reserves, but particularly the Guard on the front lines of Homeland Security Defense, they have dual missions. They're the first to answer a, nat a natural disaster that, that hits America in uniform. They're the front, front line troops. They've been integrated into the Army and Air Force in a fashion where they deploy constantly to war zones. Uh, the citizen soldier fired the first shot uh, to create this republic. Now is the time to recognize the role they play post 9-11. And the real reason we want this is we want a line of communication that's uninterrupted. We want to make sure that the Guard and Reserve component, but through the Guard particularly, is recognized uh, as an integral part of our national security, state and federal. And the idea in the next war that a Guard unit from Vermont, South Carolina, uh, Connecticut, you name the state, would go to war without body armor, uh, that would keep the people safe without the equipment they need to fight and win the war is less likely to happen if you have the chief of the National Guard Bureau in the tank with his colleagues talking about the, the needs of the National Guard. This doesn't change the legal structure, doesn't provide command authority uh, to the National Guard chief. It just simply puts him or her in the room uh, giving voice to the citizen soldier at a time we need it. I cannot thank Senator Lee enough and all those at the National uh, Guard Associations throughout the country who've called their congressmen and their senators. Uh, this bill passed the House. Now it will be adopted, hopefully, by voice vote. And I can tell you that in this world in which we live in, in the 21st century, having the Guardsman's voice inside the Joint Chiefs is going to make us a safer nation it's a recognition, an honor, well-deserved, long overdue. And I want to thank all my colleagues who, who made this possible. And to the managers of this bill, the chairman and the ranking member, thank you for accommodating us. And to all of my colleagues, come down here and work with Senator McCain and Levin on your amendment, because we don't want to be the Congress for the first time in 51 years failed to pass the defense authorization bill. With that, I yield.